Good afternoon and welcome to the Salonex Connectivity Day session. As we announced, today we want to talk about the next generation of mobile networks. And we want to go through this topic because the arrival of these technologies is driving a transformational changes that will bring enormous benefits to society. But let me share a quick example on how technologies has been the engine of these big revolutions. Uh, and, and it's not something new. It's been like this since long time ago. In 1852, a man called Alicia Otis invented the safety elevator, and that invention changed cities forever. By creating the safety cap, elevators went from carrying freight to carrying people. But that was not the only thing that changed. The upper levels of buildings in the city changed from being the cheapest ones to the most expensive of the city, and the sky became the unique limit for the urban architecture that has to do with cities that's true but how will cities change with the next generation of mobile networks are they going to be safer are they going to be more sustainable are they going to reduce commuting for sure they will we're sure that that's going to happen but the same happens in the major industries services and personal and professional workflows Today, we want to explore how this is actually possible nowadays and how we're going to face it, how we're going to make it, drawing a more accessible and inclusive future. To help me with this, I've got the pleasure to introduce two amazing guys, two specialists on this, which are Jose Antonio Aranda, the Innovation and Product Strategy Director. Hello, Jose Antonio, how are you doing? Hello, people. A pleasure to be with you here. It's great to have you here. And also Mirko Massey is Technology and Customer Solutions Director. Of course, both are at Salonex. Mirko, how are you doing? Fine. And you? Great. Uh, great. And happy to be with you discussing about these topics. Um, remember that in your player, you'll find a little logo at the bottom part in where you can display a chat and you can ask us, you can bring any questions so you make my life a bit easier and I can just uh, send uh, Mirko and Jose Antonio some of the questions. Um, Apart from that, and let me start with this, and, and this is a key question, uh, which Mirko, I hope you can help me with that. When we talk about the next generation of mobile networks, are we basically talking about 5G? Is that correct? Yeah, today we are talking about 5G, like a few years ago, we were talking about 4G, 3G, and so on. More or less every 10 years, we have a sort of revolution or change, transition in terms of technology, mobile technology. And now we have, in fact, uh, in front of us, the challenge of 5G. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Every ten years, we've been going through the three G, four G, uh, and now we're facing the five G. But but every time we we make a big change, every time we we, we want to face um, these new needs or these revolutions, in a way we have to adapt or work to draw or to design a new infrastructure, a new architecture for the networks. Is that correct? Correct. Operator are <clears throat> mainly facing this big challenge, but behind 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 them there is a, a partner like us in terms of infrastructure that we have to prepare all the infrastructure to be prepared to roll out the 5G. That means change of existing infrastructure, adaptation, introduction of new elements in the infrastructure chain to help the operator with this ingredient to build up the 5G network ready for the final service. Okay, but that means at the same time that if we have to draw some new infrastructures, if we have to draw a new architecture, we have to talk about costs. And um, that's yeah. that's um, effectively that way. But if we want this 5G to be um, as effective as this implementation needs, and uh, if we connect that with what we've read, for example, in the McKinsey document called five, uh, The Road to 5G, um, we've read that it can be a very expensive um, investment or um, it can be a huge amount of things, except for if we want to make it very e efficient and let's say cost effective. And I think this is what they call the neutral host. Is that it? Correct. Senex, uh, we consider ourselves as neutral host uh, in terms of uh, a company that is focused on preparing all the infrastructure to be prepared to share the infrastructure with different operator and this provides synergy and this efficiency that you refer to. Of course, another important point in the neutral host is this focus to maintain this infrastructure, to grow the infrastructure, and to have the operator to keep on in the uh, technological evolution of the network. So this is the role of the neutral host. Open, okay. Fair, yeah. No, no, I was going to say, okay, that's the role, but but which are the benefits? I mean, apart from the cost. Yeah, uh, the benefit that you, you were referring. Uh, as uh, several advisor and consultancy company, 
that did some studies, there are benefits in sharing. In fact, that having somebody dedicated to the infrastructure means uh, to reduce cost of the re deployment. 5G, as the other technology in the past, represent a big challenge in terms of investment for the operator. And in the value chain, the infrastructure is also part of this investment and we are ready to prepare it. So what, I, what does it mean? Having a company focus on the, the infrastructure, a company ready and available for investment, this would help not only the operator, but also the final user to get the 5G quickly in the market. Okay, great. So um, this is, uh, in a way, what Sunlix is providing, is thinking on this, um, pushing up this neutral host. Um, that means, uh, Jose Antonio, that in a way, your role here, it's basically the role of an enabler. I mean, are you the guy who are, let's say, making the magic out of that so that others can work with a good structure and provide to customers what they need? Yes, of course. Uh, since uh, Selnex started, uh, as Tower Co, we have been uh, following different models. The, the first one is a pure rental model where we provided uh, a space uh, so our customers could put, uh, and install their infrastructure. But then, little by little, we were supporting uh, the mobile operators in other models like the commissioning. So if you have two towers, uh, from two different operators, you can merge uh, both towers in just one, uh, translated into the new build to suite model. So the building a new site, we build new sites, but the aspiration of the mobile operators as well is to have some spare capacity or spare space so they can, we can put uh, another mobile operators. And uh, fo following all these models is when uh, we reach the neutral host that uh, it was mentioned by Mirko that is an evolution of all these principles where we, the aim is to find spaces where three or even more uh, four mobile operators can share infrastructure. Okay, so, so we now just uh, kind of, in a way, we draw what is this next generation of mobile networks. Um, we, we clarified also what's the neutral host, and uh, we said that we need a new infrastructure, uh, a new architecture. Um, and I would write to I would like to America to go through the different elements, some of them existing ones, not not only from 5G. Um, but I think there are some elements that we have to to or we should have on mind when talking about this uh, neutral host and this 5G um, revolution. Well, the 5G uh, is a transition to a new paradigm of technology where <clears throat> the the uh, the infrastructure required to provide the services according to the requirement of 5G that will be probably. Uh, taken after from uh, Jose Antonio, and we we have to think that, that there are new elements coming, helping the the distribution all, all over the network of some of the intelligence and the user data availability. In this sense, we have the coverage provided by sites, different type of sites, small sites, small cell, macro sites. Sometimes does solution for the indoor that is a very important aspect. Then we have the what we call small data center or central offices, mobile offices, uh, metropolitan offices. And those are the, 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 the recipient where the operator will put the intelligence of the network that it will be more spread all over. Then another important point in this architecture is the connectivity in between the elements. And here the fiber today, as normally we have seen today in, in, every day, is part of our life. Fiber is another important ingredient of this uh, overall uh, amount of element in the infrastructure and in the change of the architecture. Okay, so we, we went through first DAS and small cells, and uh, afterwards you clarify the fiber optic. Fiber optic is, is also important. Um, but that's not the only one, because uh, I think there is another one, uh, Jose Antonio, you can maybe clarify, which is the edge computing. Can you tell us a bit about this edge computing? I remember I, I, I was kind of obsessed with this concept a year ago in the Mobile World Congress uh, 19. And uh, I was able to understand it. I'll try to explain you what I understood to see if, if I was right or not. But tell us, what is this edge computing? So edge computing is uh, the capability that we have uh, to bring the network of the mobile operator closer to the users. And for this, uh, 5G creates a new whole architecture uh, based on centralized offices and metropolitan offices. And this, the, the location of this metropolitan office can be either in a city or closer to the antennas, it implies that it will provide that capacity closer to the user. And why is this needed in 5G? Basically because two aspects. One is 
there is a huge amount of traffic now being generated and with 5G, it will be something that will grow exponential. And all this co uh, content uh, is centralized. But normally, the consumption of the content is local. So it makes sense to, instead of having a big uh, chunk of data center that is centralized, to have a specific small uh, pieces of uh, content uh, closer to the users. And this implies that the mobile operators will save in capacity to that centralized uh, data center and also uh, will enable the capability to serve and the second aspect is faster response. Uh, uh, additionally to the car response faster to uh, certain aspects like uh, gaming in a bus or any aspect that requires the user uh, to have a faster response. So we are working with uh, the mobile operators uh, to improve the performance by uh, evolving the network into edge computing. Great. And, and um, Mirko, I would like to know, um, why is edge computing so relevant, for example, in a city? I mean, we are all waiting for this 5G, but why is it so important for a city? Because as far as I understood, and here comes my explanation of what took me some days, um, was that basically, this is like if you want to get your, um, let's say, your drink, your favorite drink, um, instead of asking it through an online shop that maybe comes from another country, uh, it's easier to get your connection, your drink, from down, uh, from your basement, your, from your building, in, in the local shop, uh, which makes that all connections are faster. Why is it so relevant in the city? Is it because there are plenty of, or we expect to have plenty of elements connected uh, simultaneously? Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. One of the main characteristics of 5G will be the number of elements connected. The user will be, uh, for sure, equivalent to more than what we have today, but each user will be using a lot of data. And this amount of data moving uh, up and down in the network will create a, a, a sort of an amount of capacity to be considered that can be reduced and be more efficient if we can decentralize the capability to have data available in a closer uh, point of the network. This is why the edge computing, so that as uh, as Antonio said, bring the network closer to the the customer is the the, the characteristic that we are we are going to see to be implemented in 5G. And the recipient for the 5G edge computing or whatever is an evolution of them is part of the new, new, new introduction of infrastructure to be in the architecture of the operator. In there we are working, we have done already several tests and we are deploying networks in France and in other countries to have the operator to prepare for 5G. Okay, great. Let me let me tell you something. Uh, as I announced at the beginning, um, there's going to be the option to have uh, some minutes to answer some questions. You know that in your player, there is a little a box in where you, if you click, you'll have the chat and you can ask us anything. You can check even what others asked. And um, although I, I normally wait until the end to, to share some of the questions, there's one that I think it's really appropriate. And I would like to, to share with you. I don't know if Jose Antonio or Mercury want to answer that, but it says, does edge computing require higher amounts of energy consumption that a more centralized structure? I can take this. So, Great. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, we are currently working on a project uh, with uh, Vodafone uh, to study that and uh, see uh, how we can build edge more efficiently. So the answer is uh, not necessarily having edge computing implies that you are going to spend uh, more energy. In fact, uh, we are working on building more efficient, even more efficient cabinets, and we are working on different measures. Uh, measures more on the passive. So, what are the materials that we can uh, work with uh, instead of concrete? And that's why it makes us think of how to make this more efficient or active. Uh, things like how to do more efficient air condition and the cooling. And we have techniques already in Senlex like free cooling that we already implement in some of our countries or even using uh, renewable energies. And uh, we have different examples of how these energies uh, are integrated into our portfolio of services. Great, great. Um, let, let me ask you something else, uh, Santiago, you now that you are um, answering this. Uh, lately, we were talking about 5G, but lately we've started to hear about private 5G networks. What is this about? Is this basically 
your own internal connection, let's say for industry, so that you can assure you can you can have a good connection in in your um, let's say machines or structures, whatever you need. Yes, basically uh, the the concept of a five G private network is a network that you can control one hundred percent, and uh, uh, that implies that you you will have additional data privacy. You you can have the content locally. Sometimes they talk also about uh, in, increase of productivity because you have all the knowledge and all the uh, uh, machinery connected to the, uh, the, the nodes inside the factory. Uh, and even from the more financial point of view, this implies that if a company like us help uh, with infrastructure, they, they can be even uh, savings. So this is basically, in a nutshell, uh, putting a, a perimeter in one factory or it can be a public space and install small antennas. And with some sort of intelligence, together with also, in some cases, edge computing, we can uh, provide different services uh, to the users. We have had uh, um, similar cases um, in, in the past with Tetra, for instance, is, is a private network, and we see that 5G private, uh, LT, a private network will be a, a logical evolution of all these emergency services and also uh, will enable new opportunities for the industry to provide uh, these kind of uh, technologies in things like ports or factories. Great, great, great. Um, Mirko, I was thinking, let me ask you this. I know it's, it's maybe too personal. Are you more about, I mean, are you a fan of music or more about football? What do you like better? Music. Music, okay. So like do you like the Eurovision contest? Well, I prefer San Remo. You follow it, huh? Okay, San Remo. Uh, let me let me keep on going with the Eurovision. It's more popular, more mainstream. Um, I don't know. Are you able to tell me who's going to win the Eurovision contest next year when when things come back to normality? I'm I know sorry. it's a bit weird question. I'm sorry, I'm not in cell next for sure. There will be somebody capable to do that, but I'm not. I can imagine that's going to happen because I was just going to ask you. I mean, when we normally tend to say that five G is going to be a reality in 2025. Um, that means that that will take place in three, four, five years. And um, when thinking all what you explained, and you started with that small cells, then with the edge computing, well, also the, the optic fiber, I was thinking, how did you know in Celnex four years ago that you would need to provide all this? I mean, is there anyone there who can tell me about the European contest, Eurovision, or I don't know, the, the football match in Europe or anything? Do you have a crystal ball there? Not, I have not uh, the crystal ball, but at selling we have some, we are developing it with innovation together with Jose, Jose Antonio. No, the, the point is that it's true. 5G is a reality or is going to be a reality this year. Uh, the European community has established a plan to have one city at least to be covered in a certain level of coverage this year. Uh, is something that we started to work an operator uh, more earlier than us uh, already five to ten years ago. You know already that we are speaking now, developing the 6G already. And yeah. 5G, we have been starting working on that and uh, trying to understand what the operator was going to need uh, some years ago. In our history, we started to identify what was needed for us in the future. And this is why we incorporated companies like Comscom for the DAS. Then we went to Netherlands with Alticom, looking more at the data center, edge computing, and finally the fiber. Because those are the ingredients and the elements that we consider are strategical for us and for the operator to be successful in, for 5G and for yeah, the future anyway. That, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, with fiber was with Sasha Oberta and Catalonia, OXEA. So, yeah, amazing. Um, Jose Antonio, talking or regarding to these 5G networks, um, we tend to talk about the main features that 5G is going to bring. And we know about latency, we know about broadband, we know about that we will have like a million, lots of uh, devices connected. Uh, the service continuity and availability, and of course the these um, energy, let's say energy efficiency. Um, that's one thing. But I would like to go through the benefits. And and going through benefits, I imagine that one of them, and very connected to what I was saying, it's connectivity. Yes, of course. Uh, why it, it, connectivity is important is because uh, the citizen is changing the way they face. Uh, the social life. They tend to be more proactive, they tend uh, to be more empowered, more social, even 
more informed, uh, sometimes multitasking, even hyper-connected. And uh, the mobile operators, together with uh, infrastructure providers like us, are trying to set up the connectivity, a seamless connectivity that enables those users to have their day-to-day -day activities. Why? Because they want to be connected everywhere and anytime. Uh, if they go in the, in the underground, they are expecting to have coverage. Even if they enter in the parking to uh, pick up the car, uh, they are expecting to have coverage while driving, arriving at home, uh, going shopping, and even in some extreme cases in things like a stadium when they are watching a, a football match, they are willing to share that experience with others. Okay, let me let me ask you some others. I will throw them like fast and you can just come with the answer. Um, we said connectivity, great. Let's go with the second one, sustainability. Yes, S sustainability is, is a key aspect for uh, the strategic plan from uh, Celnex. In fact, uh, we have signed uh, the uh, science-based targets uh, together with another 700 uh, companies to reduce the green event emissions uh, by 2030 by less than 1.5 uh, uh, degrees. And uh, we are uh, mindful of the importance of align with the SDGs, with the sustainable uh, goals Development of the goals, uh, United Nations. And we are working on very uh, relevant aspects on connectivity to support the mobile operators in providing additional coverage to make sure that we help the mobile operators identify uh, possible usages and as well, uh, operating responsibility uh, in all that we can. Okay, another one. Um, let's say it's going to be more inclusive and basically it's going to empower and it's going to provide much more opportunities uh, for businesses. Correct. Uh, and we see uh, more and more uh, the, the technology uh, in entering in the industry and uh, uh, different business models applying to a small corporations, uh, and that's a, a way where we are supporting the digitalization of the countries uh, by enabling the network that enables, for instance, a, a postman to instead of having uh, to sign in a paper, uh, use tablet and go to the customers and sign through a tablet, all that connections and all that, those behaviors we see that are also engaging in the industry as well. Great, that's part of the benefits. Um, let me bring, sorry, Mirko, for that, but let me, let me bring the cons or let's say the challenges that we can have on mind. Uh, you can, if you want to make it easy, you can start by mentioning one of the big challenges that you have with 5G. Yeah, challenge is better than cons because I think every cons can be transformed in a challenge. And for us, the big challenge is to satisfy and be a partner of our customer operator in order to get the 5G as soon as possible roll out in, in the different country. Uh, a big uh, challenge is the investment as, as required. That is not, only, not only a question of money, it's also a question of do the correct investment at the right time. Then another important point is to develop this infrastructure and the network always uh, in a way that we are uh, compatible with the environment, uh, all the rules in the, the environment. This is an important aspect uh, that we try to follow together with the operator. And finally, I would say that uh, a, a big challenge is to be also uh, as efficient as you were fairly in terms of energy, and this is one of our big tasks. And targets. Well, yeah, it looks like it it uh, it will provide, a, as as Jose Antonio was saying, a much more sustainable um, future in terms of everything. Because if it's cost um, saving, energy saving, uh, will reduce the usage of batteries, so we'll have to change them. Um, or they will last longer, so that will mean that we will re we'll recycle less. So everything contributes to the planet, which is important. But let me ask you one thing about those challenges that you were saying. Um, we tend to hear that sometimes with connection is very hard to take them to um, industrial areas uh, or to move like or provide connection to every single spot in the world. Is that going to be easier or is it a challenge also with 5G? Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, but uh, we think and we see that the, the mix of the different technology and the evolution of them and the availability of infrastructure and so on is helping to get uh, reduce the digital bridge. And this is in this sense we see and we are cooperating also with some government and some operator to attack and cover areas that normally are not of business interest. The recent COVID experience showed that uh, we have to have this telecom capability available 
all over the countries. And I think 5G will help on that. And our investment in this sense will be to support the operator to do that. And also the, 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 the administration that are also very careful on this point. Fantastic. I've got, I've got so many questions I have to bring to you, but I would like to uh, finish up with some, some little things. Um, let me finish with one, um, I don't know if challenge or not, um, Mirko, and I would like to ask you about this. It, it can sound a bit esoteric, and we've heard uh, United Nations um, saying it doesn't have any connection. I mean, we know about it, but we've heard a lot of people or certain people trying to connect this coronavirus with the implementation of the, the 5G technologies. Um, what would you tell to those people who don't believe on what Guterres say uh, or, um, at Nation, uh, United Nations and others? Well, I've heard about them. <clears throat> um, by the way, we have also suffered some papers speak about this, some social uh, network. Uh, the, 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 the common uh, position we have with other, also the operators is that is clear, there is no clear connection on that. This is shown by different studies that are still ongoing. Uh, there have been some movement against the 5G and uh, relating this to COVID, and this has been also also shown that there is no foundation on that. And uh, to be honest, I've been uh, studying in the uh, in the school that was founded by Marconi. I wouldn't think about Marconi listening in this kind of uh, uh, strange things. There is no relation, <laughs> a common position, I think. Look up to the future now, 5G, a reality. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So far, nobody proved anything. So um, let's let's keep on thinking that there is no connection. Um, let's go now with uh, use cases. I mean, we've been going through this this next generation, uh, through the features, through the elements, infrastructure elements, through the benefits and, and challenges. Um, Jose Antonio, I would like to to go through some real cases because I know we don't need to wait until 2024, 2024 for that, five for that. Um, can we just check some of these use cases that Salnex has deployed? Do you mind if I go again with some examples and you explain them? That's, that's great. So, so let's start with cities. Um, we tend to talk about smart cities. So how is going to be the 5G deployment in cities? Yes, uh, we have been working in a project called 5G City uh, that has been funded by the European Commission. And uh, uh, we have worked uh, with the mobile operators and together with the cities. Cities in the UK, like Bristol, in Italy, like Luca, and in Spain, like Barcelona, uh, to understand what is the ideal scenario where we can deploy neutral hosts and why. Because basically, the cities uh, do not want the mobile operators to install four different networks and, and, and dense, in dense areas. Uh, one one of each uh, each of the mobile operators in in each of the lamp posts of the city, and uh, we together with the mobile operators we have uh, tested uh, different use cases using the infrastructure of putting uh, different small cells uh, together with the uh, small cells we have an edge node and a, a central office with the data center capacity. Uh, we have tested things like um, transmission of a TV signal that we did a test with um, a Luca or uh, things like a unauthorized waste a collection uh, that we have done in Bristol. Okay, great. Um, let, let me ask you a second one. Let's say I want to I wanna enjoy a concert from Barcelona, but it's taking place in Australia. Uh, my favorite um, group is, is down there and I'm not going to just kind of pay for that huge trip. Is culture, music, for instance, going to be revolutionized by 5G? Of course. And uh, uh, with another mobile operator, we have been working uh, to enable the first 5G music festival in Europe using its computing capacities. <clears throat> so basically what we have done is we have put a 360 camera in the stage of a concert and uh, we have set up a booth far from the stage where we have virtual reality glasses. So we transmit it using 5G uh, and uh, uh, with the capabilities of edge computing, we produce all the image and sends to the virtual reality glasses and it, uh, people in the booth can feel as they were part of the band. 
That's amazing. This is That's replicated, fantastic. as you mentioned. This can be done in Australia or any other places. Yeah, yeah, and that can can make that you can go to a concert for a much lower price than if you have to go physically. Um, let me go with another one, and very connected to what we were saying before. We talked about sustainability, about protecting our environment, our planet, our let's say forests. Um, tell me about security, drones. What can you do with that? Again, uh, we, we see that uh, security is another aspect uh, and, and in general, how to uh, uh, take care about the environment. Another area that we can help the mobile operators to uh, deploy uh, specific use cases. And we have uh, set up a, a 5G network uh, together with Edge Computing Node uh, in the control center uh, where there is a fire. And we fly a drone that is capturing and capturing uh, the image of the fire and with a, a thermal camera uh, detecting what are the heat map we cross that with IoT sensors we put a GPS location sensors to the firefighters and all of that was sent to the central control place where they were able to control and to manage the fire more efficiently even after extinction. Wow, it's it's amazing. And you protect people, which is more important. People don't have to get there um, because we've got a machine technology is helping for that. And let me let me ask you the last one, uh, because we've got plenty of questions that I want to I want to share with you guys. Um, connected cars, something that we also talk a lot, autonomous cars, connected cars. How is that going to change? Yes, I uh, hear uh, we are doing things uh, on uh, urban mobility and also on Castelloli circuits. So on Castelloli, we even have developed our own mast uh, with wind energy and with solar panels, that, and all of them connected to a battery. So we do not need to reach all the mast with energy. Uh, this was uh, the, the mean to communicate with a car and test different scenarios. Uh, and we have tested uh, different scenarios also in urban areas, things like uh, an ambulance coming, you warn the network, the network bro broadcasts a message, and the message is sent to the cars that can go to a site and let the ambulance pass quicker. Or connections between uh, the car and the uh, infrastructure of the city, like a traffic light. So the traffic light, when it's going to turn red, it sends the message to the cars, so drivers that are accelerating can stop accelerating and save fuel. I'm, I'm very fan of that. I'm, I'm super fan of security. I'm also fan about another thing. You will not be uh, fined anymore because you will not be able to do things that are not allowed. I mean, if the traffic light is red, you'll have to stop because if you don't do it, your car will do it for you. So no fines on that. It's a good thing too. Okay, so let's go with some of the questions that we have. Um, before we, we end up with this, this session. Uh, there are lots of them. I'm going to try to to share some of, of them. And for example, we've got one, and now we're talking about sustainability. Let me let me start with that one. It comes from uh, Juan Garcia Prieto, and he says, in terms of sustainability, are you considering having solar self-consumption in every, every one of your own masts? I don't know who of you can answer that. I take it, uh, uh, no, I don't believe so, at least in short term. Uh, there will be, I mean, um, the energy efficiency doesn't mean that you have uh, uh, to look always for alternative uh, source of energy. Solar is one, can be uh, the right in some environment, and there are also eolic, there are other ones. The important is to have the best efficiency use of the energy on site. For sure, there will be sites like those, but there will be other types of sites. In fact, as always, we have to look the best solution for every site. Great. Um, let me go with the second uh, that comes from like Separd. And it, uh, uh, the question is, is Celnex looking to provide the small cell sites also for operators or focusing on macro sites? I can respond to this. Um, Great. In fact, we are already providing the small cells uh, to the mobile operators. Uh, we have different uh, cases, uh, not only in a close environment like a stadium uh, where we provide uh, infrastructure uh, to the mobile operators to cover uh, stadiums in Italy, in the UK or in Spain. But in cities like, uh, for instance, Milano, uh, where the city has restriction on installation of uh, uh, equipment in the whole city, uh, the, the, we have installed uh, uh, small cells that are shared by the three or four mobile operators in Italy. Mm -hmm. Just to complement, uh, yeah, I like, Go ahead. As an infrastructure operator and ultra host, we will provide 
everything is needed by the operators. The, the difference between a small and a macro is just a question of uh, power, location. We can provide any type of, of infrastructure that can help this type, kind of uh, rollout. Great, fantastic. Thanks, Mike Murka, for that clarification. Um, let me ask you another thing uh, that I think is very interesting, and we were sharing some some minutes ago, um, that has a lot to do with uh, opportunities for businesses. And the question is, what implications this technological evolution will have in generating new business-to-business -business opportunities? Yes, we see we see that um, uh, the first uh, use cases that the mobile operators will target with 5G is the corporate market. So uh, we see opportunities in an industry, uh, but uh, we see also opportunities even in the edu education. Uh, we see opportunities in changing the way uh, how we approach uh, the tourism, uh, as we explained with uh, 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 the, the, the first uh, 5G music festival, even uh, the way we buy things. So. Uh, we see that uh, we can uh, support the mobile operators in offering B2B services, not only through uh, private network, but through investing in new use cases. That's uh, yeah, absolutely interesting. And every time I hear more and more cases that we can go through with 5G, I, I, I don't know why, it, it must be some, something that happens to me, but after listening so much about the economic crisis that we're um, kind of uh, very close to and all that things, I feel like, we can uh, go through any crisis in a much better way um, with 5G in terms of security, in terms of economy, in terms of providing culture uh, in several ways, in, ter in terms of teleworking like we do um, on these last weeks and, and those kind of things. Okay, one more thing. Um, well, we've got plenty. Mirko, a question that comes from Omar and he asks, what impact do you think will have the uh, virtualization of mobile networks? Of course, there will be an impact. Um, today, virtualization can be read in different ways. We are mainly speaking about virtualization of the core function of the network, but we can imagine that that could be also extended to the edge of the network. We are seeing already it uh, implemented, maybe in an early stage by the operator. Uh, I think it is something coming and we will see more and more. This is why we think also that uh, our offering in terms of natural host can help this virtualization because our mission is to provide the recipient and infrastructure that can be shared. And we will when you virtualize, you can virtualize maybe different function in the same hardware. And this is where sharing can reduce also the cost. And also sharing. to complement to complement Mirko's uh, argument, yeah. uh, we also see uh, that new technologies like virtualization uh, can uh, help us bring in some additional solutions or additional assets uh, to the industry as well. So, for instance, if uh, we finally see that uh, also there is a virtualization of the radio uh, and some baseband needs to put in a shelter, uh, there's an opportunity for a company like us to offer a shelter that can be shared and, uh, in uh, between the mobile operators uh, using that tower. So, in, in fact, we see all the technologies as a, a possibility and another opportunity to keep on supporting uh, our customers. Yeah, and complementing what Mirko is saying, um, I'm going to go with something else. As, as my mom used to say, sharing is caring. So. Um, if we share, it's going to be a good thing. Uh, more questions. Uh, let me let me go with this one by John. Um, he sent this question. He said, "Which spectrum will influence the next five years the most, and why?" Well, uh, we are looking for spectrum as hell, and now the only <laughs> spectrum left is in the high band. So probably in the future will be more high band spectrum, where there is most more band available and then more capacity throughput. But you know. There is a trade-off between big band, high band, high frequency with the coverage. So as a trade-off, we'll have shorter range cell, even if there will be an integration of new functionality that will help on that and there will be an evolution of uh, the equipment. For sure, this uh, high band that we'll see arriving will be the future and will be real there to help also the operator to develop. Yes, right. and also, uh, um, if I may, um, uh, there's a tendency in the market that as we require to extract more and more traffic from a congested area, there might be a need to use high frequencies. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the mobile operators in a first stage, probably they will uh, use 
uh, frequencies like the 700 or the 3.5 in Europe to cover high level 5G coverage, while uh, in the next two, three years, they will start implementing more and more uh, 26 gigahertz antennas. And even uh, we see an opportunity as well uh, for uh, technologies in higher frequencies to link places where you don't reach a, a fiber or direct connectivity. It looks like what you're explaining is it's really interesting for the people because we've got every time more and more questions. Um, Lee Shepard asks, is Selenex providing or managing the fiber in infrastructure between sites? Yeah, yes, this is what we are now. Uh, well, we are in the, on the way to develop more this business line. As I said before, we are working on this in France. We have something already on wor working in Spain, in Catalonia, as you referred before. And this is our target also to help. I mean, the ecosystem of 5G or mobile network include the fiber. And if the fiber can be there and can help this deployment and link the different elements that we provide, this is also part of our target and our management system. And, and I think it is very important because in the end, uh, with 5G having more traffic in an antenna, to take all that traffic out of the antenna, you need to connect with fiber. So there is no, no, no uh, a better solution than reaching all the antennas as, as much as possible with fiber to extract all that traffic. Okay, great, great. Um, many more questions. Um, one that just arrives right now from Jurgen. Jurgen asks, is Selenix looking into owning active parts of the network and leasing it to networks as a full neutral host? Well, uh, here uh, we, we have, uh, as we have explained, uh, we, we want to move from uh, uh, the pure concept of a tower call, where we are just providing uh, the radio access network and the uh, access to the masts, uh, to uh, having a, a bigger role in the value chain. And for instance, we have signed an agreement, as explained, with uh, uh, operators in France, uh, where uh, together with uh, not only the, the MAST and the radio access network, we are helping to migrate uh, uh, to, into 5G and uh, to um, uh, operate all mm -hmm. their data centers and all their metropolitan offices with the idea as well uh, that if there are additional assets that they need to build, additional uh, metropolitan offices or edge computing nodes, uh, we will be able to support and create those new spaces as well. Okay, great. Um, uh, let me ask you something, Jose Antonio, because you were talking uh, previously about use cases, and uh, Juan uh, Juan Garcia is asking, and, and he says, voice, data, camera, payment, and location functionality are the main features of mobile devices these days. Do you envision any new one in the oncoming future? Thanks. He asks maybe, for example, AI, virtual reality, personal assistants. Well, we already have personal assist assistant translators. Etc. Of course, and uh, and this is something that we are, are also uh, trying to understand and trying to test. So I mentioned before uh, things like uh, virtual reality that we use uh, to just meet the, the, glasses, the, yeah. the, the glasses, but also, for instance, we have uh, recently finished a project with a mobile operator and a business a business school ESA, uh, where we have installed augmented reality. So that's something as well right. that we see. So uh, you look at something and together with the same image, you see something as, as you move, the, the image is moving. So that's another aspect that we are testing and we are trialing. Also, we see things uh, like a, a virtual reality applied to cells. So imagine uh, an application and we have a project that uh, hopefully uh, we will see light uh, in 2021. Uh, where uh, you can buy virtually uh, using a, an automated uh, a assistant. And you right. can see what a camera is seeing from your home and you can buy. So all of these visual things are the things that will increase the usage of 5G. Fantastic. Guys, uh, we don't have more time. We're run out of time. I mean, I would love to ask you lots of the questions that are here. So what I can tell to the audience, the people who's looking at you, if you have any question, if you want to share anything with Jose Antonio, with Mirko, with whole team at Salnix, you can you can just send them a message, uh, email them through marketing at salnextelecom.com, and they will be pleased to answer. Jose Antonio Aranda, Innovation Product Strategy Director. Thank you very much for joining us today. It was great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mir Kamisa, Technology and Customer Solution Director at Salnex. It was also great to, to listen and learn from you. Thank you very much. Thanks.
And um, well, as you know, and if you've heard, infrastructures and innovation are key. And that's why, uh, for instance, we would like you to imagine how things would, would be or what would have happened without uh, connectivity on the last couple of months. Look at this, and we hope to meet you at the next Connectivity Day session. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. My...